Hi, I'm Kelly from Skating Polly. I'm Peyton from Skating Polly. And you're watching Motor City Vlog. Awesome. I thought guitar would be really hard to learn, like switching from chord to chord and remembering all the finger positions. And my mom was actually taking drum lessons herself. So she's like, why don't you just come take drum lessons with my drum teacher? So I like, did that for about three months, a few months. Yeah, maybe, maybe half a year. At the and most. so, and I just, you know, fell in love with it. But I also fell in love with guitar and other instruments whenever I learned those. But initially it was just because I thought it would be easier to learn the beats than finger positions. <laughs> I actually, my first instrument was like this weird, it's called a bassata. And it was created by the President of the United States of America. But actually recently someone told me that it was originally created by morphine or something. I don't know, but anyway, my dad had heard about it from the President of the United States of America. And when I was little, I never wanted to play guitar. Like, I mean, we were talking like eight, nine, even though everyone else in my family could, because I was just like, oh, it hurts my fingers and I'm double jointed, so my fingers would lock and I hated it. And I wanted to play bass, but you know, full scale bass was like too big for my little <laughs> arms. And so, Bassadar was like this mixture, it's a guitar body with two bass strings and C sharp and G sharp, so that's what I played. And it was like, I don't know, I just thought it was awesome because up until that point, I, I thought I would either just be, would play piano or I would just be like a singer. I just thought like, you know, instruments might just be above my head, like, I might not just be that. <laughs> but I could do it and it was so simple and I could just easily make a chord and I could, you know, I. It could sound so gnarly with distortion. And I had high end and low end like right next to each other and it, it was great. It sounded like a guitar, even though it was this weird, simple bass. And I, even if I was just playing two notes, I could you know, write a song over it. I think I just, yeah. Like when we actually started the band, me and Payne were writing songs. Like I was writing songs on bass and she was writing songs on guitar at the same time, pretty much. Um, I hated drums at first because I just thought it was like, I just thought there was nothing to it. I thought it was just like, you know, I wasn't very good at it so I could only play really minimalistic stuff and I hated what I could play and I was like, oh, it's just loud and it's, there's no melody to it and I really like melody. But then as I became a better drummer, I like really appreciate drums and like, that's equally as much of the part of, of our songs, especially since we're a two-piece. Um, Piano, I was always kind of playing that, and it was the easiest for me to learn other songs on, I think. Because I, I, I don't know. I really like Virginia Spectre and Piano High School. Hidden. For me, drums, obviously, that was. That came pretty naturally. I mean, like, I'm still not, like, the best drummer, but just, like, staying on beat came naturally for me. Guitar was a little more difficult because, like I said, it was just really hard getting to the point where I could switch from chord to chord. And then piano, I'm still not very good at piano. I have one song on piano that we play sometimes, I and I miss the chords about, I don't know, more than I should, like not 50% of the time, maybe like 15 to 20% of the time. <laughs> When it's just like, that's still a pretty big chunk of the time. I miss it that much. <laughs> it's like, it's, it wouldn't be like I just like miss the entire chord. I like put one finger on a wrong key or something. I'm still horrible. I'm not horrible. I shouldn't say horrible. I'm not good at piano. Uh, she's written some really cool songs on piano. So I'm good at I think she just, we just don't really practice a lot of her. I mean, she's only, we only have one Peyton song. Peyton piano song that's on an album that's on this new one. It's it's weird because it's mostly on piano and then these really loud cymbal drums come in and in the mix we could just turn down the drums but live it's like <laughs> and so we haven't played it live in the past couple of shows but I think we might actually start playing it 
Maybe. Not tonight. Okay. I just mean, like, we might start playing it. <laughs> Before I would have said cello. I was like really into the idea of learning cello. Mm. I don't know. I kind of like the idea of like knowing how to play like a banjo or something. But also, I used to be able to play violin whenever I was in grade school, and I would love to pick that up again. I don't know anything about violin now because I haven't played it in like almost 10 years. <laughs> so. Actually, xylophone or vibraphones, you know, I think that would be really cool to play. I mean, I'm sure that would be one of those things if I bought it, then I could technically play it. It would just be playing around with it, you know. But I just don't really have access to one. But I, I love the way those sound. DJ Bone Break from X, you know, he plays them on the, he plays one on like their acoustic songs and then also in the Flesh Eaters. And he's amazing. He can do so much. It would be awesome to be that good at it. Cause I, I love the sound of that. I've always loved those. We've always wanted to do something where we did a video for every song on the album. And this new one is the first one where we're going to get it done, I think. I mean, we yeah. haven't shot a video for every song somewhere, but we're really close. Yeah. So We only have three songs that we haven't shot videos for. Well, Audie Moore, uh, Audie Moore, and Opinions, and Cosmetic Skull. Yeah, so we have three more to go. We have some that we just shot, and then one that we shot a while ago that hasn't been released yet. Yep, but it's already edited and stuff. Yeah. So I really think we are for this album. We, I've I've heard about other bands doing stuff like that, and of course, like you know, Lemonade. She made that whole visual album, but Rings Around the World by Super for Animals. I don't know if they made it like a movie or if they made it if they were technically music videos. But we watched that one time, and I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And so, I mean, nowadays with the internet, so many of our fans find us through our music videos, and. A lot of our, I think, you know, it's weird because sometimes they'll find, like, some fans will just listen to, like, a little late or something, and then they, they won't see the other ones, or, or they'll only hear a loud song and they won't hear the quiet ones, and then that's kind of like, you know, they'll show up to Skate and Polly Show, and now we're, like, mixing them. But I think if we have a bunch, like, for all of our quiet songs and all of our loud songs, the chances are higher that people can really, like, you know, hear all of our many faces. <laughs> it's really a collaborative thing, mostly yeah. with us and whoever's directing it. Yeah. Like, uh, this, we shot two recently, just right before we went on tour in the UK, with this girl, Sophia, Rosen's wife. wife. And uh, she had these two great ideas for Morning Dew and Across the Caves. And I think that was mostly just Yeah, her. no, that was entirely her. But on other ones, it's really collaborative it, for the most part. Yeah, for the, for the most part, it's like we just, like, okay, we have a video, and we decide we're going to do a video, and then, like, two days later, we, like, actually shoot the video. And then sometimes we came up with the concept, like, that day. It's just like, okay, let's do this, and let's do this, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, it's just a lot of, like, brainstorming with the director, but a lot of the times... You know, they're ready to shoot, and we're just like, you know, they say action, and then we did, like, Projector Boy, all of that was just improvised. The only theme was, everyone's going to ignore you. And I'm like, okay, so I'm going to be really crazy. I was like, okay, let's shoot something un under the table. But with Sophia, for these next two videos, I told her, I was like, I want, like, decently clear storylines, because I feel like a lot of our videos are kind of abstract, or, like, they'll be shot in pretty places and stuff, and I think, or live shots or something, and, and that does really work. But I really wanted to switch it up and do like a like beginning and and so she came up with these two just fucking really creative, beautiful video ideas and we shot them in New York and yeah it, it felt like being on an actual set you know she had like okay at this time we're gonna go to this location and at this time and before that it was just like okay where can we shoot this let's try that room <laughs> okay let's shoot it in our closet whatever you know. <laughs> Uh, I have a lot of favorites. A little late, well, I think will always be one of my favorites, just because yeah. it was just we just drove across the country shooting it, and it was just so much fun. So it's like a mixture of how beautiful it is, 
and all the great memories we have with it. And then I really like Protective Boy, the one where she just everyone ignores her at the party and she's under the table. <laughs> that was so funny because like. I mean, we shot that at like midnight, going later, and then Peyton was just like, uh, I'm going to take sweet. a nap till the live shots. <laughs> this looks really fun, though. I like what you're doing. She cut out all these, like, stars. We set up, like, those stars took a long time to cut out. I have them hanging above my bed now because I had they were in the living room. I was like, I wish we could keep these stars forever. And my mom was like, just leave them. And then one day she was like, okay, we need to take these down. <laughs> and I was like, fine. I'm just going to hang them up above my bed. Um, and they're all sparkly and they cast kind of shadows in the wall. <laughs> Other um, favorites. I really like um, Stop Digging a lot. Ugly. What? Stop digging. Yep. It has. Yeah. Stop digging. Uh, I mean, I really like them all in their own ways. I I was surprised how much I liked for the view because sometimes I mean, like I liked our idea and stuff because it was kind of like you know let's just do like a funny video. Yeah, and sometimes there are like funny things in our videos, but usually we just try to steer away from like funny videos sometimes because it's like. We don't want to seem like our music's also like funny, or like our music's a novelty, you know. Um, but for that one, we were just like, okay, I want to like. It was inspired by this uh, Joe, Joe Walsh. Walsh, Joe Walsh and the Gang video, and it's like you know just them jamming out, and they just have this bad green screen behind them, <laughs> and we're like, we need to make a video exactly like that. And so we did with like our own art and stuff. And I thought we actually looked like dudes. I looked like Frank Zappa in it. Yeah. And it worked because it wasn't like, hee hee hee, here's my cat, hee hee hee, I'm smoking weed. It was like, you know, like, we were just went through it like really seriously, just like with, in drag, so. <laughs> I also really like nothing more than a body. Yeah, we That's, shot that all on iPhones. Yeah, all on iPhones. Like, mo it was mostly done in a day, right? Yeah, it was mostly done in a like, day. Like, we got a. Uh, the request from Noisy, like, hey, we want to do something with you, and they're like, we have, do you have a video we can premiere? We're like, we can. In a couple of days, and they were like, you have like three days. Get us a video. So we shot it all in one day, edited it, and then gave it to them. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. No pressure. Three days. <laughs> we need a video. <laughs> <laughs> you would be surprised how many deadlines there are. Like we like did in, in five videos in two and a half days recently. Just earlier this year. Yep. Hey Sweet, Stop Digging, and Protective Boy were the ones that released from that. And then we also did Picker of His Words. And, then and we tried to do Audi Moore. We got one for Audi Moore, but it didn't turn out like we thought it so would. So we're going to redo do something else for that. But we got four. Shot for five, that was what I should have <laughs>the lyrics to that yeah. seem like you know they seem all like scary or something but it's really just I, I i think the lyrics are hilarious they're just about like i mean they're com completely hilarious it's about like stealing people's skin it's about some old lady who steals her her younger relative's skin and bones because she just can never be happy with her appearance <laughs> and getting older yeah, and i'm like i'm not an outgoing person so that video was just really tough for me to shoot and then the director his name is dave smith every once in a while he'd be like do this and at one point he was just like, dance like this. And he was just like, <laughs> that. I was so embarrassed. Paint it in the mopiest <laughs> way possible. I was like, so ashamed <laughs> of doing that in the public bar. Because we'd be doing it like right in front of people. But it turned out friends. so great. I'm like screaming at the top of my lungs, just like jumping around. I was like, God, I was having trouble breathing. I've we gotten a little more comfortable with that kind of stuff. Like whenever we were shooting in New York, we had to do this stuff on the subway where we were just like, Belting. Dancing and screaming on the subway platform. And people were just that like, fine. like... I did that fine, but for some reason, it's me dancing. It just <laughs> <laughs> um, there was one venue in Visalia, California. We had the show booked. We were on tour with these two bands, Sana and Bad Mother California. And we got there, and they're like, how old are you? So it was like... I'm 18 and she's, how old were you, like 13, 13? Like, you can't play here. But so we couldn't play. They didn't let us play. But for the mo that's the only time we've ever not been on the yeah. show. Usually we, I mean, if they're, even if they're really strict, 
at, at most it's like, okay, you can sound check, then you can leave, then you can play, then you can leave. Um, as far as like gender goes, I mean, not especially. There are times where like, I, but I think it happens with a lot of people. It's just like, you know, some men is like, okay, well this is your monitor, and like blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, I know. And it's just like weird, like backwards, like duh, duh, I know that. <laughs> like we were touring with Kate Nash and she got really frustrated with this guy because he was being really condescending to her even though she's, I mean, she's been doing this for a while. But as far as gender goes, really, we've been really luck lucky. I mean, we've had creepy fans and stuff, but honestly, we haven't dealt with we don't really surround ourselves in situations where we will deal with the old sexism, you know? And I read interviews of like other like teenage girl bands and it's like, I can't help it that I have a vagina, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, dude, like you're like an upper middle class teenage girl. Like how many times do you like actually run into sexism? <laughs> Cause I mean, I, I mean, it definitely is real and there are definitely things that need to be worked out. And there's just bullshit, but it's like, I just roll my eyes, I just like, I don't give a fuck most of the time. Like here's something, like it's just like a little like sexist thing that people don't really realize. It's like, you get lumped into this category of female music, even if it doesn't sound anything like you. And I know that like bug, bugged babes in Toyland and stuff, cause it would be like, you'll go to a show and then you'll be on a roster with like three other girl bands that literally sound nothing like you. And it's like, well, why can't we just be on a roster with three other punk rock bands? You know, you, I mean, so what if they're girls? So what if they're guys? It's like, it's it should be about the music, not our gender. I don't know exactly. It's so, I know this sounds like really like conceited and like, oh, I'm so great, but like that's not what I mean whenever I say this. It's just like sometimes I do wonder the same thing. <laughs> like, how, how? Like I listen to our melody and I'm like. How did I do that? And I listen to someone else's melody, like, how did they come up with that? And I mean, I really like our melodies as much as I like some of my favorite bands' melodies and songs. And I mean, I don't know how we do it, but I'm really glad that we can I've, do it. I've always been kind of, I've always kind of just grown up in like, I, I was raised by really cool parents. My dad just has amazing taste in music. My brother has amazing taste in music. Our friends do. I mean, so I've always been kind of doused in awesome music and awesome melodies. And I think, like I said, I, I really love like singing along to stuff. And I, I think it's because, I think, I mean, I just, I like a lot. I, I, I like, you know, loud song, punk songs and stuff, but I really like punk songs with good melodies, and I really like, I mean, some stuff that's just unapologetically pop, just like insanely pop, cheesy pop. I'm not like, not stupid pop though, but you know what I mean? Just like, really like, whoa. And I think just, because I've never been technically, a, like a technically good musician, like ZZ Top or something. I've just, I've just really liked songs. I really like singing and I've, I think just kind of growing up with it I've kind of had my own style as a mix of like learning what it, it's like I learned it from all these other things. A lot of the times for me music comes first um, uh, but sometimes you know you get like you just have a, a thought go through your head and that's those just words just come out and they're just perfect and then you write a song around that, you know? Or sometimes you're like, okay, I'm gonna write a song about this and then you just start riffing. <laughs> but usually whenever I do that, I have to like go back through and like, ah, this melody could be better. <laughs> if I just like focus on it for the melody and not the words. And then, you know, it's, I, I, I feel like they're equally important. And then try to fill it in. Yeah, I always start, or not, Always. Most of the time I start with just a guitar part, just four chords. I come up with different chords for different parts later and just start with the one part and come up with a melody over it. Sometimes, like I was saying, a phrase will just like pop into your head and you're like, I have to write a song with that phrase. Or like... Someone will like...
say something weird. Yeah. So, but most of the time it's melody first. But I do have a list of like of phrases or ideas that I want to like write songs about that I just haven't gotten around to yet because it's so much easier to write a melody first. And whenever you have a melody, the lyrics that you may want to put in a song don't always fit to the melody. So yeah. it's just yeah, I I. I'll, I'll give myself like little head exercises and stuff too, and I'll try to like almost like uh, um, like you know like be in the same headspace as like some of my favorite artists is what I try to do like write a melody like them and kind of in a lot of ways, but not off of like one of their songs and not like trying to mimic their vo vocals or their guitar style, but like have an air to it that seems like something they could create. And it's I don't, it's hard to explain, but I'll just be like. It's so and so mixed with so and so. Okay, I'm gonna try doing that. This kind of sounds like I like this. <laughs> Even if it doesn't sound like it's like, oh, okay, this is good. <laughs>